It's a brand new year, which means it's time for an updated list of the top VS Code extensions for working with JavaScript. I'll show you a few that you've probably never heard of and also a few that you can delete completely because you just don't need them anymore. Let's take a look. As we go through this list, let me know if you have any favorite extensions that are missing in the comments below. But let's start out with a bang with one of my favorite extensions of all time, and that is the Quokka extension. Now, this is the easiest way to be able to test JavaScript snippets inside of VS Code. So this is the Quokka extension. Once you have this installed, you can search for Quokka in your command palette. Now, this is uh, command shift P to trigger the command palette on Mac and then control shift P on Windows. This is how I'm going to run all of these. So inside of here, I'm going to choose a new JavaScript file. It's important to know you can also do TypeScript, which is really, really neat. And what happens is, let's say I start to type in here and I just run a console log of, hey, well, you see, I have the output showing here and the output in this window below. Now, this gets really cool when we maybe create a new date. So we do something like this and then we want to log out date dot. And I can't remember what format it gives me for the day. So I'll call this function and now it gives me a single number instead of a padded zero. So if I wanted to pad this with a zero, for example, I could convert this to a string and then call pad start and say, I want this to be two characters long and I want to pad with a zero. And now you see, I get my zero one. So to be able to do this inside of VS code as a scratch pad, the easiest way to test out JavaScript and TypeScript, you can even with the paid version of this install NPM packages to be able to test out Axios or something else. It's super, super cool. It's my favorite way, the easiest way to test JavaScript by far. All right, next up is a classic to make sure your code always looks good, which is Prettier, which is an automatic formatter inside of VS Code. I could not write code without Prettier because I don't do any paying attention to the how my code looks. I let Prettier take care of it. So if I were to tab this thing over and then uh, do single quotes for this instead of double quotes, if I were to remove the last, what do they call it, the Oxford comma or whatever, if I were to remove that, and I save prettier takes care of formatting all this. So it pushes this back to where it should be. It converts single to double quotes. Let me know if you prefer single or double. I don't think it really matters. And then it has the Oxford comma. I actually don't do the Oxford comma, but I also don't care to be able to stop what it gives me by default. So I wouldn't be able to write code without prettier. It saves me so much time not having to worry about tabs or spaces or single versus double quotes. I just write code and it formats everything on save every time. And to be able to take advantage of this inside of your settings in VS Code, you'll want to make sure that editor format on save is checked. So that'll just take care of doing this automatically for you, just like I've got set up. So you never have to worry about doing it manually. Now, this next one is one that changes the way that I write code drastically. And it is a paid one, but I'll also give you a free alternative here in a second. And that is GitHub Copilot. I never imagined that GitHub Copilot would be as good as it is right now. In fact, I did a video early on basically saying I was skeptical of GitHub Copilot a year and a half ago or so. And I was 100% wrong. GitHub Copilot is better than I ever imagined. Uh, so this is a paid feature. I think it's $10 a month with GitHub. If you're a student, you get a discount or maybe for free, you can check that out. But if you have any way of paying for this, tell, let me tell you, it changes the way you write code for the better. One of the things you can also do is potentially ask your employer to pay the uh, $10 a month to get you access to it and tell them this is going to save me 30 minutes of my time a month, which is easily worth $10. So example of this is if I have all of my posts inside of this code and I want to uh, get a uh, post by title, I want to organize these or uh, sort these by title. It goes ahead and it literally writes all this code for me. So I just chose the first snippet and it actually looks pretty good. Since I have IntelliSense in this, I know it's actually referencing the right properties. And this is all based on code that I've been writing. So it knows that for each post, it has a data object, which has all the front matter, and then it can reference the title and it does the sort algorithm for me. So just by defining this variable, it knows how to write the logic to go ahead and do that for me. It's way better than I ever imagined. You should absolutely check it out. Now, if you're interested in a free one, one that I've used in the past um, and haven't used in a while, it is tab nine. Now this is another fan favorite, I think from a lot of people, it gives you a lot of the same types of auto completion using AI. So you should definitely check this out. If you're uh, interested in something for free to get started, this is great. If you have the budget or if your employer can cover it, GitHub Copilot for me is absolutely the way to go. All right, this next one is another fan favorite of mine and it is the Postman VS Code extension. Now I'm so excited about this that I've created multiple videos on this topic in the past, two or three of which have been some of my most successful videos ever. And I first started by saying I didn't need Postman anymore because of a built-in extension that I'll mention in a second. 
inside of VS Code. Then I did a follow up video. And most recently, I did a follow up video saying the Postman extension is finally here. So all the power of Postman that you're used to inside of the desktop client, you now have access to inside of VS Code. Here's a quick example. This is uh, a request for uh, the coupon page on my Astro course website. So if you were to go to the landing page for my Astro course right now, what happens is you can pass in a coupon property in here, and then it will make an API request to the back end to find out what that uh, discount is and then apply that. So if we were to reload this page with that coupon and scroll down, you'll see that this is being applied where it's 50% off of the full price. Now to test this, I can go inside of Postman and I can search to a recent one where I made a request to the coupons API endpoint. So let's see, I can choose one of these requests that I did earlier of testing this out and it's gonna send it to the locally running application for testing inside of the Postman extension. And I can see the response that comes back and it tells me the discount, uh, et cetera, that I need to know to be able to display that stuff appropriately. So that works exactly as you expect with a Postman client. Now, what's cool about this is I have all of these coupons stored inside of a Zeta database where I can go and query the information, find out the coupon or the code, the discount associated with a given coupon. Now, for people who are paying attention and are interested, you could steal one of those coupon codes now and use it. I think with one of those, if you go back and pause, there is a couple of free versions of the course left. If you want to go and find that, be my guest and have fun with it. So the Postman extension, perfect for being able to test API endpoints. The other one that I do want to uh, shout out is the Thunder Client extension. Now, this was the video, my most successful video of all time, where I originally said I don't need Postman anymore. And this extension is very similar. It's very lightweight. It's awesome. It's been around for a while. I just have used Postman for a long time. So having that inside of VS Code is great. Either one of these is going to be great, and they're both free. So you can go and check them out to test all of your API endpoints inside of VS Code. You'll see a central theme in lots of these extensions where the less code we write, the better, the more someone else writes the code for us. And this is exactly what this is. The ES7 Plus React, Redux, React Native snippets. And this is basically just a snippet extension to be able to write snippets specifically in the React ecosystem and ES7 snippets. So I've been using this extension for years. It's got snippets to create uh, React components, React components with TypeScript, et cetera. It's what I use to create a new component in React every single day. It's this extension. And I don't want to just give you this one as an example. I would go out and search for any snippets that make sense for any use case that you're using. A specific framework. This is ES6 code snippets for just JavaScript, HTML snippets, etc. Go and find snippets to be able to do the things that you have to write manually on a regular basis and have it do it for you. That's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to make it um, less error prone because you're not having to manually type stuff. So go and find a snippet extension that works for whatever environment that you're working in and save yourself some time. All right, raise your hand if you are using console log for debugging in your applications. Probably everyone's raising their hands. I have talked about setting up true debugging in VS Code in the past a lot. I actually rarely do it and I mostly console log. And this is one extension that makes that process a lot better and a lot easier. And this is turbo console log. Basically what you do is you come in and you select something that you want to log. And then you use the shortcut to be able to activate this. On mine, it's option and control and L. You can double check this when you install. And what it does is it uses a pre-selected format to be able to log that variable, including which file it's in and then which function it's in. So this is inside of the get API route function inside of this coupon.ts file. And then it uh, says the name of the thing that you're logging and then its value, which makes it so much easier to read this when you're debugging and make sure it's visible. Otherwise, you just have a stream of data. This actually breaks it out and organizes it in whatever format you define to be able to easily see this as you log because you're not doing better debugging and that's what we do anyways turbo log to make your logging process so much better and more efficient all right as a javascript developer you're probably working with maybe a few different frameworks and maybe you get overwhelmed with how many there are but for almost any framework that you want to work with there's probably an extension that you want to install to make it easier to work with inside of vs code now i've been doing a lot with astro i mentioned my astro course at astrocourse.dev but this extension for working with astro is absolutely a necessity for doing this. Without this, I get no color highlighting. I get no syntax. I get no IntelliSense. I get nothing with Astro because the dot Astro file is not something that VS Code knows by default. So whatever framework you're working in, I suggest that you go and find one that's going to help you do that. So there's one for Astro. There's one for Svelte that I have installed as well. Just take a look at whatever you're working with and see if there's an extension specifically made to help improve that environment. Otherwise, working with Svelte, working with Astro, would be impossible inside of VS Code. So you have to go and check out any relevant extension for the framework that you're in, whether it's React, Angular, Vue, Svelte, 
solid, all the things, go and install those to make working in that even better. And if you're interested specifically in Astro or Svelte or Next.js, make sure to check out my newsletter at jameshuquick.com slash newsletter, or you could just go to the homepage and scroll to the bottom of the page. I send weekly updates about what I'm working on and content that I create and courses that I come out with as well relevant to those topics. So if those interest you, go and check out the newsletter at jamesqquick.com. All right, here's one that's been a staple for a long time, and that is the live server extension. Now, in some ways, we don't need this very often because almost all the major frameworks come with a live reloading uh, server. Astro, Svelte, Next.js, React, anything like that is going to have a live reloading server that updates in your browser automatically. But what if you're just doing something with vanilla JavaScript, for example, that's where live server comes in. So I've got open the build a quiz app tutorial mini course that's on YouTube for free. You can go and check it out if you want to. It's great for beginners for core fundamentals of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And with this extension installed, if I open an HTML page and then click go live, this is going to, to run that live reloading server at localhost 5500. So this opens this up inside of the browser. If I were to come back and update this to quick quizzes, for example, and come back, you can see that that is automatically reloaded. This is by far the easiest way to work with just vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So live server extension is definitely a way to go. And if you want to check out this mini course, you can check it out on YouTube. I've also gotten so many questions about this course of how to, how to add different features, et cetera. I've thought about making an updated version of this, building kind of a super quiz app with some relevant technologies now. So if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know what sort of specific topics you'd like to see inside of a quiz app covered either in vanilla JavaScript or a framework or whatever it is you want. Let me know that in the comments below. All right, I've got one more of the must installs and this is a little bit selfish, but it is a theme and it is my theme. This is the James Q quick theme. This is what, if you ask me on any of my recent videos, this is the theme that I've been using. So you can install this, you get the colors that you've seen in all of this video, which I think are pretty neat and kind of match my brand. So you can check that out at James Q quick theme on VS code. Now, one more thing I want to mention that I get asked about all the time is what font do I use? And I use the Cascadia code font. This is free. You can go and install this and do my theme and have the exact same setup that I have. Now I mentioned there were a few more extensions you may not need anymore that you may have used to use. So let's go through those now. I actually had the .env extension set up for this video. And then I remembered that there's a built-in command in Node.js to be able to uh, connect to .env files directly. Now I actually did a video on this a few months back called you don't need .env to handle environment variables anymore. You can go and check that out on YouTube as well. I still use this because I forget the command with Node.js, but technically you don't use this or you don't need this if you're running a version of Node uh, recent enough to take advantage of the connection to .env files as a flag when you run your application. Now, another one that someone else mentioned is NPM IntelliSense. I had this installed and I installed it. And that's because IntelliSense is already built into VS Code now. So VS Code now will just give you that IntelliSense automatically. As you do a require or an import from and start to type, it'll give you IntelliSense for the packages inside of your project. So you don't have to have a separate package or a separate extension to be able to get this. It's already built in. And then lastly, one that people mention a lot is the auto rename tag. Now this is one that I have had installed for a long time, but I can disable this completely. And then I guess I have to reload. But what this does is it allows you to change one tag of an HTML element from div to a P tag, for example, and it changes the closing element. So this automatically handles the rename and there's no need for a separate extension to get that. All right, so those are what I think to be the must have extensions for JavaScript in 2024. If you have anything that you think I missed, let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Check out my newsletter if you're interested in more of my content at jamesqquick.com and I'll catch you next time.